welcome to CBR TV. I'm Jonah Weiland on the CBR yacht at Comic Con International in San Diego. It's my final interview of this convention, and I am very honored to have an American hero on the boat, Congressman John Lewis from the Fifth District in Georgia, and his co-writer on a new graphic novel called March, Book One from Top Shelf, uh, Andrew Iden. I, I, I got that right. Thank you guys very much for coming out. I'm quite honored to have you here. But thank you very much for having us. Of course. So let's let's talk about this journey that you guys have taken together. And, and this is the journey of your life. This is the story of your life. This is the story of the civil rights movement. Uh, I don't think in my 27 years of being a comic book fan of just, you know, from superheroes onto these independent comics, more historical fiction, that I'd ever see this story come to fruition. And I'd like you to tell the story a little bit about how this came about. Because as I understand it, you one day heard that he was a comic book fan and suddenly things just kind of went from there. Well, Andrew, uh, who have been on my staff now for more than six years, uh, near the end of one of my campaign, uh, said, uh, I'm gonna go to Comic-Con. And I knew a little something about it, but not much. And other people in the uh, staff and around about uh, started making fun of the whole idea. <laughs> and I, I tried to suggest there's nothing wrong with uh, reading comics. Uh, done another time in another period. That was the comic book uh, telling the story of the Montgomery movement right. and Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, so Andrew came to me and said, uh, let's do a comic book. And I said, oh no. Uh, and later uh, he kept talking. And I suggested to him that if he uh, did one with me, then I would do it. And Andrew, the rest is history. Is Andrew, is there a point where he kind of had to do like a little test for the congressman so he could see what kind of approach you wanted to do? How did you, how was that first movement into making March? Well, I remember the first time we, we sort of talked about it after he put that on the table and I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you really, because I'm going to go talk to a publisher. Like if you're just sure. And uh, he was, and so, so we started to do it. And then it was just a matter of learning how to do a, a script that was a little bit different from the radio or TV scripts that, that we would do as an ad or something like that. Um, and I remember buying you know, some of Scott McCloud's books and reading those, and I think one of my friends gave me how to write a graphic novel for dummies. You know? <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was starting at the beginning, starting from scratch. Um, but as we got going, as we started talking about it ourselves, Congressman Lewis is a natural storyteller, and, and hearing his own stories, they just seem to find a natural place uh, on the page. And so it was just a matter of formatting it and finding all the words that we could fit and uh, telling his story as he tells it himself. Congressman, talk a little bit about the collaboration with Andrew and how that worked. Was it a series of interviews? Did, you, did he write the story and then did you come in and edit him? How, how did you approach this? Well, on several occasions, uh, Andrew would come and uh, interview me uh, and he would have uh, a, a tape recorder uh, and sometimes he'd just have his pencil and pad and take notes and I would uh, tell him the story. But he read uh, my memoirs some few years ago and so he knew a great deal about me, and uh, he was able to put it in, in my words. Um, and it was an easy task. It was very easy. And there was some time I said, oh, we need to change this or add that. But uh, it was not difficult, not at all. How is it different from your memoirs? What, what is there that may not be in your, in your memoirs? Obviously, a, a graphic novel can't contain everything that's in your memoirs, I'm guessing. So what's really different? Well, first of all, it is it's action. It, it is action. It is uh, drama. Uh, when I was growing up and after I got involved in the civil rights movement, I always said we need to find some drama. We need to find a way t for some action. We need to dramatize the issue. Right. Make it simple. Make it plain. Make it so people can feel it, almost smell it. And that's what Andrew was able to do. And along come Nate Powell, this graphic, unbelievable artist, illustrator. Uh, he took the words off of the pages and, and made the word sing. Hmm. Andrew, talk about your learning process. This is your first graphic novel. You've been an aide uh, to uh, the congressman. Uh, you're obviously well-educated, but you were learning a new language and writing a comic book script here. Right. Well, I think the first thing that helped me the most was that I was a fanboy. You know, I mean, I started reading comics at eight or nine. My, Grandmother would let me buy them off the uh, spinning rack at the Piggly Wiggly. 
Um, and so that was a, a, an understanding that maybe I didn't know I had until I sat down and started writing. Um, but then, you know, once we had the script, a, a large part of this was learning from Nate, who is a master storyteller. And it was a big moment for me after we turned in the, the second script to him when he didn't have hardly any changes. And I was like, Nate, you taught me how to do this. And, <laughs> and so there, there's, there's been so many people who've helped along the way, who've taught me things, who've, who've shown me how to tell a better story in comics, because it is a language unto itself. And sometimes people come from the outside and they try and do this and they fail because they don't respect the medium. Um, and you really have to have respect for it. You have to love what you're doing and you have to love this, the way you're telling the story as much as the story you're telling. Are those other members of the staff still making fun of you from, for coming to Comic-Con now that you've got your first published graphic novel? Not so much. Not, <laughs> not, not anymore, no. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is probably a bit of an odd question, but you've spent your life and career about, around various political conventions. You just spent your weekend at your first comic convention signing. Uh, first off, I want you to talk a little bit about that, uh, that experience. And secondly, tell us, really, is the zoo climate that much different from a political convention to a, a comic book convention at this point? I don't see a vast difference. <laughs> I don't uh, think there here is. Here at uh, Comic-Con, you, you, you see people dressed in, in different ways, but even at some political convention, you see people... Uh, dressed up in costumes. Oh, yes. See yeah. uh, see people with a lot of flags and colors, uh, especially the, some of the young women were uh, put all type of things on their hair, in their hair. Yeah. And some of the men, uh, politicians like to stand out. They like to, people to pay attention to them. Right. So here, I think it's, it's the real world. Comic-Con is the real world. And to see people in different ages, see people bringing their little children, and, and see the little children all dressed up, and enjoying themselves. It, it's a great feeling to see people having fun. What's been the reaction to you as you, you've done a signing here and you're talking to people who bought the book? What's been the reaction? Oh, the people have been wonderful. Yeah. They've been so wonderful, amazing. Uh, I had uh, a few people come up and said, I'm so honored to meet you. You're a superhero. You're my hero. And a few people started crying when they see me. Wow. And I said, please don't cry. Uh, and I step and I sign their books, I hug them and wish them well. But it's very moving, very touching. Uh, you, I mean, the story of your life is a touching story, so I, I'm not surprised to hear any of that. Andrew, uh, before we came up here, uh, you were telling me a story of something that happened in Congress last week. Uh, please share the story, this is pretty amazing. Well, to put it in context, in 1954, the comic book hearings that devastated the industry were held by a subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Right. And, and just earlier this week... Dr. Frederick Wortham's Seduction of the Innocents exactly. was the star of that, that hearing, yes. Right, right. And, and just last week, the, the chairman of the, the, the current chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Patrick Leahy, Senator Patrick Leahy, um, who is a comic book fan and who's a good friend of Congressman Lewis's, at the end of the hearing on the Voting Rights Act, he held up a copy of March and he said, this is going to be read by all five of my grandchildren. So talk about bringing this full circle, where Congress once uh, tried to effectively kill the industry. They effectively did. And now you've got a member of Congress writing a graphic novel, other members of Congress, the chairman of that same committee, bringing it out into the forefront, out into the light, and endorsing, supporting. We've come a long way. I think we have. Yeah, <laughs> Wortham actually really did try to destroy uh, the comics industry. I don't know if you know this, but it is essentially what birthed the uh, domination of superheroes in comic books yes. without without him. So it is that is an incredibly touching story. And thank you, Senator Leahy, for uh, doing that. I, we like that support. Uh, Andrew, if you could talk a little bit about the process of getting this published and how you got introduced to Top Shelf and, and, and working with Chris Daros and his crew. Well, um, Congressman Lewis graciously went with me and had lunch at another comic convention that happens in Atlanta. And we were sitting in the hotel, and uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, comes up to the congressman and he says, you're John Lewis. <laughs> you're a real celebrity. And um, so he sat and he talked for a moment. I was having this odd feeling that here's my childhood meeting my adulthood, you know? And, right. and uh, so on his way out, he, uh, he said, you know, if you ever need anything, call me. And uh, 
so I ended up needing him at some point. And so I ended up calling the front desk at Marvel Comics mm -hmm. and just saying, this is Andrew Iden, I work for Congressman John Lewis, and I want to talk to Jimmy Palmiotti. And bless his heart, he called me back two days later. It was actually uh, Amanda Connor on the phone, and she's mm. like, are you looking for Jimmy? And sure enough, there's Jimmy. He talks me through it, and he's like, the only guy who will be able to do this right is Chris Staros. And so I got it together an email, and I sent it, and you know, I put the headline, referred by Jimmy Palmiotti. Like, that made me very official, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so Staros emailed me right back, and he was like, I'm interested, you know? And, and it went from there, and, and once, once I started working with Chris, you know, it really all came together. Uh, this is the first of three books uh, as we bring this close, to a close. Uh, what's, what, how much more work do you have to do, or have you given Andrew everything he needs for books two and three of your story? Well, I think for the most part, uh, I've given Andrew everything that he needs uh, to finish, uh, book two and book three. There may be a little touching up here and there, um, because some of the drama is uh, still unfolding. Yeah. And, but I think for the most part, Andrew, you would agree that uh, we're almost there? Almost, but I, I don't think I ever want to stop being able to ask you questions about this. I think it, what's, what's so remarkable about this book is that it's coming out of a time uh, you grew up during the Civil Rights Movement when this, the country was so racially divided. Uh, and we keep seeing reminders of that today, the Trayvon Martin uh, 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 hearing just recently uh, and his death. Uh, if anything, March, the graphic novel, is needed more today than it was even possibly then. It's, it's, it's going to be a perennial, and I'm glad you're sharing the story with us through this graphic medium because it only helps to legitimize what I know to be one of the greatest mediums in the world. Uh, it's a great way of storytelling, and thank you for uh, you know, indulging us. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Uh, for all you continue to do. All right, Congressman, a real pleasure. Andrew, thank you, thank you very much for coming thank out to the audience. I'm Jonah Weiland, and this is CBR TV.